The 2024 College World Series is officially in the books, and we're here breaking it all down, recapping and reviewing what was our trip to Omaha, Nebraska, as Tennessee comes out on top. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Phillips. He's Harrison Fant. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications, check us out via podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us across all social media platforms as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. We're brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. And again, thank you to MyBookie. They were our partner for our trip to the College World Series and all of our College World Series coverage. Make sure you check them out over at MyBookie.ag, promo code SCCU, to get your special welcome offer on your first deposit. Guys, a first deposit match that will give you a deposit match of up to $1,000 on that first deposit. And, of course, guys, you go to MyBookie. They've got other sports besides college baseball. They've got football. They've got basketball. They've even got a casino that you can play in as well. So again, mybookie.ag, promo code SECU, to get that special welcome offer today. Again, we're talking College World Series, and I'm joined by my good friend, my co-host, my colleague, my partner in crime, not just throughout this regular season, but in Omaha, Nebraska as well, Harrison fan. Harrison, what's going on, man? Appreciate you taking the time. Chris, unbelievable experience that we've had this season. The growth that college baseball has experienced and developed in The time that we had in Omaha, the mecca of college baseball, Chris, we had an unbelievable experience, our first experience in Omaha at the Holy Grail of college baseball. And we're here. I can't wait to talk about it more. It's it's so exciting. I'm still amped from it, you know. And Haberson, you're decked out in the merch right now. You're 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 doubling up with the shirt and the hat. Yeah, you're gotta, you're re- gotta rep the set. The hat's clean. The, the hat is very clean. I, the shirt too, but the hat is. I know you were trying to decide which hat. That hat is. I love it. Simple, I, sleek. Gotta get the right to the hat. point. Got to get the right hat. And That's on the back, it. it says the greatest show on dirt in black as well. So subtle goes with everything. Team logos got, got or no shirt. team logos? On um, the hat? No, nothing. Okay, okay, okay. The I shirt, know. though, yeah. does have it. Have the team logo. Love that. that that's Just a very – like you and I were shirt. looking for that one. You and I were looking for that one out there. Yep. I, yeah. You got to get the right thing. There's so many options we saw. The Omaha Baseball Village was insane. Just boost everywhere. and. You know, I've talked about both in the Masters. I feel like the Masters just merch-wise and just a lot less organized, I will say. Um, a little bit pricier than the Masters. About the same maybe the Masters, but T-shirts a little more expensive and stuff. But, you know, when in Rome, we talk about when in Rome. Imagine, Harrison, on that note, though, how much merch the Masters would sell if – because those tents are out there just, like, open to the public. Like, you don't have to go in the game – the Masters, that you talk about a madhouse. I mean, yeah. it would be insane. It's a good thing they probably don't do that. Um, guys, as you can tell, this convo is going to be a little bit different than some of the others. Normally, we're, we're like previewing games and we're crunching numbers and or recapping games and doing that very thing. But we've kind of already done that. We've kind of already broken this thing down. And, of course, we're going to talk about the fact Tennessee won the whole thing. But this is also really cool and special because, again, it was Harrison and I's first experience in Omaha, Nebraska, at the College World Series. And the College World Series, Harrison, I know you'd agree, it goes so far beyond just the numbers or even the games. Like, it's it's the experience, it's the stadium, it's the people, it's the stories, it's... It's It's so many. Yeah, there's the food. There's so many layers to it. Uh, We met so many talented creators as well, some that you collab with, some that I collab with. But we will start with this, though, Harrison. The Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, we previewed this series last week. You picked a and I picked Tennessee. We both picked three games, though, and it was a classic like we expected. Just quick thoughts. Tennessee wins it all. I know you're not surprised by any means, but again, you were boots there on the ground in person, in case you guys don't realize. I was there until the Tuesday of championship week, the week prior. Harrison stayed throughout the entire week. The coverage was fantastic, by the way, Harrison. Thank you for doing Thank that. You. But... Uh, yeah, man, your your thoughts on the on the final and you know being there, boots on the ground. It's experiencing that. You got to talk to Drew Beam. You got to talk, I believe, Tony Vitello. Just thoughts twice. on that Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, twice. Thoughts on that Tennessee team, Tennessee winning it all and being there in per- person to witness it. Yeah, Chris, and the amount of content we got there and just the growth of our brand there was unbelievable. I mean, I'm still trying to get some content out. I, I, it took me. I left at six thirty in the morning Tuesday and got back last night at. 1130 maybe um we, so we to just to just to piggyback Harrison not to cut you off with what you said though like we credit to Harrison I'll give myself some credit I guess but either way as SEC unfiltered we have been going so hard at it with college baseball and the college world series and everything else I'm literally on the finals live reaction game three show 
And it was a compliment, I think, Harrison, because someone comments and goes, do you guys cover other sports? Like, people started to think, Harrison, that SEC Unfiltered, solely a college baseball account. Solely Let's go. Sports, which, again, is a compliment because – that's just how much content we were able to pump out. And again, thank you to you guys because we wouldn't be doing that if there wasn't a yearning for Absolutely. it, if there weren't people that were interested. And it's like you've been talking about all, all, all season, Haverson. And again, I don't mean to be long-winded and cut you off, but it speaks to what you've been saying about the way the game is growing. The interest has never been higher. And we definitely felt that with the content just being there at the College World Series. No, 100%. You, I couldn't have said it better myself. Just – Thank you to everyone, obviously, on social that has engaged with us and just, you know, had conversations with us, you know, and, and love the stuff that we're doing and appreciate the work that and the coverage that we've done. I mean, we've been busted our butt all year, Chris, to do this, and we wouldn't have had it any other way and to end it in Omaha. And for me to be able to have the fortunate enough and blessed enough to have the opportunity to do this with you at SEC Unfiltered and be in Omaha the entire time. I mean, I interviewed several players and Tony Vitella after they won their first national championship in program history. Not something that we either one of us imagined or even thought of in January. I was I was like, Chris, we gotta apply to the College World Series credentials. You're like, <laughs> All right, sure, I'll I'll do it, see what happens, you know? And I mean, sure enough, we were there and we were a huge presence there. I mean, we had a lot of great conversations with coaches, a lot of great conversations with players. The players loved talking to us. They told us like, firsthand and the other creators that we collabed with and did stuff with, growing their network in there, you know, it was unbelievable experience. The food, the people, the city, I mean, it was the baseball. I mean, we got three insane games, Chris, in the finals. It wasn't like last year, you know, a tight one in game one, a blowout in game two, and a blowout in game three. We got three down-to-the-wire games, it felt like. And then we knew either way we were going to get a team that would win their first national championship on the diamond in program history. And so that was, I think, exhilarating. And two electric fan bases, two of the best fan bases in college baseball. I mean, in, in sports, too. Obviously, the SEC, it just means more. The fan bases, the, it, everything means more in the SEC. So to have that, I mean, it, I will say the color combination of maroon and bright orange do not mix well in the stands. It, it looks really odd. But, I mean, obviously it looks like Tennessee had more fans there. They were all decked out in orange, you know. So a lot of a and fans wear white as well. So it wasn't as, you know, easy on the eyes to see who was who. But we knew how loud A&M fans were. The bubbles were there. The ball five chance. But then we heard Rocky Top. We heard, it, we heard everything, Chris. The, the full experience, everything that Omaha was and is lived up to the hype for us in the College World Series this year. And obviously, guys, with that being said, and it did, it did. It was an incredible College World Series. I don't want to have, like, recency bias and be like, this is the greatest one because next year I'll be saying the same thing. But this was probably one of the greatest College World Series ever, with, especially the way it started with the walk-offs. And, guys, we want to acknowledge – Four in a row. Yeah, four in a row. We want to acknowledge also the elephant in the room that we were obviously talking about this on Wednesday afternoon. All this Texas A&M stuff has happened. Jim Schlossnagel is now the head coach at Texas. It's all hit the fans. I want to make sure you guys know we're not dancing around that. We've talked about that a lot on our socials, a lot on YouTube, a lot on podcasts, everything. And, Harrison, I'll give you an opportunity to voice really quickly. Again, we'll be doing more content on that. Um, it's crazy, though, because you and I were talking off air. It feels like the College World Series happened a month ago because the – I mean, Tennessee, and I know they had the – 12 hours. I mean, they they don't care necessarily because, you know, whatever. They had their parade. They're doing their own thing. But, like, I thought we were going to get a day or two, Harrison, to kind of reflect on Tennessee and bask in their light. And, like, nope, Texas A&M's like, we're, or excuse I guess Texas is like, we're going to steal the show literally and figuratively by stealing somebody else's coach. And so that's been the talking point. But um, it takes nothing away, obviously, from Tennessee. Fantastic club. Like you mentioned, Harrison, it was an electric College World Series. Tennessee was incredible. On the A&M thing and Texas thing, thoughts on, I guess it's a two-part question, Texas getting Schloss and Schloss leaving A&M. And now we got guys in the portal as well. Jace Lavalek, Grahovic, Caden Sorrell, Caden Kent, guys that you and I literally watched 48 hours ago. And these guys are and now I talked to all of them. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. And, a lot of talent that's in the portal now for a and and the rest of the SEC is going to be hunting after them. But to touch on those two, Texas got a phenomenal coach. Take nothing away that Texas got a phenomenal coach and coach Jim Slossengel and the entire staff with him. Of Max Matt Wiener, too. Coach. Your boy, your boy Probably Max the best Wiener. coach in the country. Yeah. yeah, I'm a huge fan of him in the Arm Farm, the, what he does and how he develops pitchers. And 
betters them in every aspect. I mean, they dominate the zone. That's that's. I, if I had to say one thing, they dominate the zone. That's their thing. You get one of the best recruiters in Nolan Kane, an associate head coach in him, and just I talked to both of them at length and how like I mean how they develop players, how they you know type the style they recruit and everything. It's unbelievable to hear that, and it was obviously one of the first I'd heard of programs and how they do it. And it was awesome to hear, and it just like, it made so much sense how they do it. So he's a phenomenal recruiter. You get the pitching, uh, the hitting coach, um, Mitch, Mitch's name, Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Early or I Early. Think I think, early. Yeah, yeah, I think it's Early. Yep. I mean, he's worked with some of the best series in the country at AM. He's a great hitting coach, too. I mean, to get the whole staff, it's, it, it's, I guess if I had to say one thing to cap that Texas side, big brother, little brother. That's feels what it like feels it. like feels to like do that to your like. rival Again, we, 12 hours. And we are, and listen, I've been accused, Harrison, of being an Aggie. I've been accused of being a Longhorn. I'm neither. So you can trust when Harrison and I speak on this. It's all, it's all objective. It's all love. I got nothing against either one of them, obviously. But, and I'm not even like, I'm familiar with A&M, but I, I wasn't nearly as familiar with the Texas-Texas A&M rivalry as we're all becoming. So like when we say this, it, it's just from how it looks, and to your point, how it looks. Very little brother, big brother. It looks very. It, it much does like be, that. even more so because of the relationship with Texas AD. Um, what's his name? Chris, Chris Del Conte, Chris Del Conte who, yep. who was the AD at TCU for eight of Sloss's whatever twenty, maybe eighteen years there at TCU. So they're best friends. That mm-hmm. was the biggest thing for me that I thought was like a red flag. I was like, this is a little odd, right? But I like the, the co- assistant coach. Everything you got to do, you. I mean, if you think they don't go to Texas, then they're stuck kind of in up in the air of unknowns at AM. Like they have to, Max has to do what's best for him. This is first year back in, in college coaching after being commanders for a while in the Pro Bowl. No one can't do what's best for him. Mitch has got to do whatever's best for him. I get that. And obviously, we haven't had conversations with them yet. Hopefully, I will have conversations with Max and Nolan, who have uh, built some good rapport and, and relationships with so far. Hopefully, to have some more conversations with them down the road. Um, and just kind of understand more, not to report really or anything, but just to have a better understanding from their perspective because they got to do what they got to do, right? Mm. I 100% understand that. We've had talks with a lot of Texas AM fans when we were there. I talked to the guys over at Tex Ags and um, Billy Lucci, really great guy. I've had a, built a great relationship with him in, in Omaha. It, it, I'm just impressed, impressed, Chris, of how under wraps this was kept for so long. But still, it felt like people growing and knowing about it more and more because, like, we're hearing reports it happened between Georgia series, which they won in the regional, which they went between that, lost the LSU series. So that's not a bad, bad loss, right? But lost at Miss, Ole Miss. Not a good Ole Miss team. A lot of questions about a style of coach and everything, but, like, Tex Ags was still, like, it, it felt like they were kind of confused. There was a lot of stuff behind the scenes I'm not going to go into that I know about. But it's just such a weird situation. And to do it for – what I tweeted out, I think this is the greatest rivalry in college baseball right now. And you said college sports right now. <laughs> I mean, it's the, I mean to, to make an equivalent of outside of SEC, it's like Ohio State Michigan. Mm-hmm. I, I would 100% agree. But just more people because Texas is way bigger and I think they care more. Um, so it's it's insane just how it happened and how it slipped up. And and it did it like literally he was still in an F- Texas A&M uniform in a press conference and this kind of blew up. And then just – they they mentioned Harrison. I, I tuned in to Tex Ags on Wednesday morning, the day we're recording this. Billy Lucci made a great point, to your point. We interacted with him there in Omaha. Great dude. They do a great thing. Fantastic. But but he he mentioned, and this kind of blew my mind to think about. It. He said that had Texas AM won the national title, he would have been he, gone by the gone parade. Before, uh, before the parade. I, like I, that's I insane I, to think about. It's one of those things that's like, there's no way, blah, 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 you think about that. It's also, there's no way he leaves AM and goes to Texas. So I think anything is up for the air. I mean, yeah. I don't think, I think one thing we've learned, Chris, to kind of, I guess, tie a bow on it. Well, try to tie a bow on it because it's still going to evolve and come out yeah. more and more this week and the rest of the summer. Anything can happen in college baseball. Anything can happen in college athletics. Like, you, I guess take their, everything for, with a grain of salt is the way I'd explain it. It's business at the end of the day, and I mean that's it's just the reality where we are in college sports. And the guys I feel for, and I know you do as well, Harrison, the players. I feel for the players. Yeah. Uh, the the and again, like you said, to put a bow on it. There's so much you can unpack. Again, we're trying to focus on the College World Series and recapping it, but this is such a big part of it. It feels like now it's like the College World Series went one extra day, and that extra day was Schloss leaving for Texas. When you got a guy like the twelfth man in uh 
Targotch, right? Targotch going on social media and saying that he found out via Twitter. That's uh, that's that's becoming more and more common. That's brutal. That's brutal. Like. That's just that's brutal. I, I mean, and then you got Braden Montgomery's mom voicing things, and you got other parents, and like, you know, you're finding out more and more. There's former players speaking out, like, but the fact the team didn't even know, they weren't even told. That's 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 bad. That's bad. I, I don't want to speak on things I don't know, but there's a lot more that has not come out yet that might continue to come out. But Chris, we are here to talk the Omaha experience, our experience. For those of you who have never been to Omaha or have heard things about it or know people that have, if you get the opportunity to go to call to Omaha to watch the College World Series, whether it's your team or not, do it. Yeah, do it. You will. It's not going to be super cheap, but you will have an unbelievable experience. From everything from the food, the culture, the history, the tradition, the teams, the players, the people. It's it feels I think it's the best kind of World Series like playoffs, because obviously the NCAA like, tournament, but the playoffs of any sport, because it's eight teams and just how everyone comes together in the middle of Nebraska. Well, the edge of Nebraska, technically. But you know, you get the final four. We get a final eight, Chris. You know, you don't get like a we get a championship series too. On top of this, Chris, it's unbelievable. And it's just, it's, yes, I think I'm still like speaking on our drill and just my first experience, but I solely believe this with my heart that it is. Yeah. It's like, I was sad leaving. It was, uh, and I was sad. I, the, I, I was sad when the series was over. I mean, honestly, it was, it the is, best four uh, days of the first four though. Yeah. Uh, opening weekend. I'm glad I was there opening weekend. It was, and you know, really I was thinking about Harrison and it's like many other things because the baseball is awesome. You know, the the venue's awesome, but it really is the people that make it so cool. And it's just so cool to see so many different folks, whether it be fans, it be players, it be coaches, it be other media. Um, all those people come together. And, I mean, the great people that we got to meet and interact with, again, folks from Florida, folks from A&M, uh, folks from Tennessee, you know, obviously Kentucky as well, obviously all four of the SEC teams, but even others like Florida State and getting to meet College Baseball Central and – and, uh, you know, others that either I've had on the show or have interacted with on social media or you've interacted with, like, it is always, in my opinion, the people that makes it, the, whether it's any of these events I ever go to, you ever go to, that that's what, that's what really makes it cool. And, uh, but no, the, the hallowed ground as well that, you know, that is the College World Series, getting to stand yeah. on that dirt, stand on that field. Um, I heard the. I have some of the dirt, Chris. I you got some of the dirt. Love that. I got that. some dirt. Love I got some I'm, dirt. I got some confetti. I'm kind of even the NCAA yeah. people were great. They gave me great recommendations for food, places yeah. to go. They were great to work with. You know, press conferences, built those relationships up. The SIDs of school, I really appreciate them and everything they did, and just you know the communication with them was unbelievable. Especially the SEC schools, which we interacted with the most. But we went to I went to Rosenblatt, the old Rosenblatt stadium. It's turned into kind of like a good. Memorial Wiffle Ball Stadium. It was unbelievable, super cool experience. I'll be posting that very shortly. Unbelievable experience. I did get to go to the zoo, Chris, so I saved that for us for next year. I have a bunch of restaurants we can go to next year. More food reviews coming. Big Yelp guy. Yelp, let's work together next year. Let's collab. We'll, we'll get some stuff done. It's some great content. So, unbelievable, Chris. I'm still high on it. And the good news is we can plan that. We can plan the College World Series trip again this year. Out, it was more our than first time. Out. It was our first, yeah, more than a week or two away, which is great. Um, for those that don't realize, I mean, it was literally the Thursday of right before the Super Regionals, and that's when everything was booked. So, yeah, we we pulled the strings together Chris, quickly. I booked mine the day after Florida won. Yes. Florida was the first SEC team to yeah. clinch. That's what we were Ironically yeah. enough. Yeah. And we got official that night, and then I booked stuff the next – I booked it during the North Carolina-West Virginia game. I love that. And, I, and I, I didn't have a flight. I booked my flight back, Chris. I flew out of St. Louis, not Omaha, six hours away for $500 cheaper, which is huge. I booked that uh, game two of the finals. <laughs> so that was <laughs> an experience unlike any other, Chris. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, the stories we have, I mean, and we'll, we'll continue to go back. It'll be magical every time. I, 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 I remember telling you, I was like, I can't imagine this ever getting old for people that maybe say, like, you get used to it. I, maybe, but I, I have a, especially because it's, it's once a year, it's only 10 days or 11 days. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just something I think I'll always look forward to. Uh, and I feel confident in saying that, listen, they say you never forget your first. I, I'll never forget my first College World Series, obviously, with you, Harrison. It was, you know, again, the people were great. Even our even our Airbnb, the lady, she helped me out tremendously with directions and where to go and all that good stuff. And, again, the fans. Yeah, I stayed at the Animal House after that. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, yeah. shout out to them. So, I mean, yeah. even, Chris, even the guys we talked to, like Mike Monaco, 
uh, Ben McDonald, uh, who else? Aaron Fitt, um, Chris Burke, you know, like Eduardo Perez, all these guys, the, um, unbelievable. Danny Waxman, just unbelievable. Kyle Peterson. Yeah. Kyle Peterson, great relationships, you know, building with them and just hearing great recommendations. Ben McDonald told me first day, he goes, you got to go to the driver. Drover, you got to go to the driver. You said Drover like was fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so, I mean, like, even people with that, like, I don't want to say status, but like status and that have done this year after year after year still appreciate and enjoy the experience. It feels mm-hmm. like internally, like it's their first, second, third time. And I, I think it's, again, it's a, it's a gathering of, of people that are genuinely good people for the most part that, you know, all have similar interests, obviously all love college baseball, all want to see the game grow. And, and it's, it's awesome. And it's awesome to be in that room and in that building with like-minded folks that, and again, we collab with a lot of people on great content. You did as well, all these post-game recaps and all this different stuff you were doing and that I was doing. And um, it was all, I mean, it's, it's hard. We're sitting here recapping and reviewing it. It's hard to put it all into words. So when Harrison we can put it all into content. We can put it all into content, yes. But so when Harrison says you got to experience it, I know for a lot of folks listening, you're going to probably wait until your team is in it. I respect that. But man, if you just love college baseball, and you even if your team's, yeah, even if your team's on it, you should go. I mean, it, it's and Omaha's a great. I thought it was a great city, really nice, really clean. Um, and, w- yeah, and when you just, go, hit us up. Yeah. Come, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely want to meet y'all and interact with y'all and just enjoy the experience. And that's part of it is just meeting people. Like you said, the people is what make the experience mm. so great, Chris. Favorite uh, favorite memory for you from the college? Resident? I, one that jumps out to me, I know it's difficult to answer, but I'll tell you, and it goes to a game. That Tennessee-Florida State game, the first, because like we weren't we weren't really in the stadium, admittedly, guys, because it was, it was North Carolina-Virginia, ACC game. It just means less. We uh we 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 were kind of hanging out with the locals. We were at Omaha Baseball Village. Got to meet the Chinook Seeds guys again. I could just go on and on and on. Hanging out in the Omaha Baseball Village, hanging out at the Blatt, doing whatever. But so that Tennessee Florida State game kind of served. I feel like Harrison. It did as our first game. And I mean, my God, you couldn't have asked for a like. I'll never forget that game as long as I live. I'll never forget the Blake Burke check swing. I'll never forget Christian Moore hitting for the cycle. I'll never yeah. forget any of that. Yeah, it, unbelievable. I mean, that was definitely, a, like you said, the, our first taste, and it really kind of started sinking in. Then, like, we were there Thursday for media day on the field, and like, this is insane. You did a live show from the field. It was like this is. I flew in and Ubered straight to the field and had my suitcase in the press box, <laughs> and went and just started grinding on content, meeting people, you know, networking and just taking on. I felt like I was like this the entire time, just bug eyed. I was like internally just trying to absorb everything, you know, and externally like be professional and everything, and just. I don't know. I felt like a kid in a candy store almost, but was still. I was like trying to force myself to sink to have to sink in as soon as I could and as much as I could, and that was really hard because mm-hmm. it feels like everything's going by so fast. The first couple of days flew by. It felt like the two off days were a little weird. Obviously, the schedule were not. I mean, didn't get any if necessary games, so that didn't really help. All of us were. You one guys were hoping to have one game, you know, and um, it was just it was unbelievable for me, Chris. I'd have to say championship game one everything about it and just being on the field leading up to it in minutes before doing I was on the field for the national anthem the flyover um I don't know it just really I, I was sitting here I was like thinking to myself right after the national anthem I was like January I we were just, we just started doing this covering it we started to wind up unbelievable I cannot believe we're here right now I cannot believe I'm here right now after everything that I've kind of gone through this season with it and just so blessed. I, I sat there, said a prayer. I was like, "This is such a blessing." I, like, I hope I don't take ever take it for granted. And it, that for me was it. And then a close second, obviously, was the championship, being on the field as soon as possible after that with restrictions, and then getting interviewed Tony Vitello during the week. A great interview with him, a walk and talk, which was very complicated and not easy. Um, then after, and then all the players. It was just the players made it awesome to the experience for me because they were so great to interview and interact with, and they really appreciated us because I felt like they. They appreciated us because we just had conversations with them, you know, chopping it up, whatnot. It's like, hey, like, we still have a job to do. You mind doing this? Like, you mind answer a few questions? Like, yeah, absolutely. Not a problem. So on. So that was awesome. And it's just, like I said, for me, that first, right before that championship game, because I covered it last year for the mm-hmm. Sports Center, all the highlights for College World Series. So it's completely different side of the viewpoint of it. And I couldn't be more blessed for the opportunity. 
It's very well said, Harrison. Like you said, it's 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 a blessing. Um, it's one that as well. I I certainly am grateful for. Did not take for granted. Will never take for granted. And uh, to your point, it's if you would have told me, and again, folks who have followed along for a while, especially you've been watching the college baseball content since January, which if you have, shout out to you by the way, because I mean, let's face it, first couple videos, first couple windups we did, we're struggling to get a hundred, two hundred views. College baseball is you know very early in the season. There's other things going on. Get it, but. We stayed consistent, stayed grinding, Harrison. I credit you a lot for that. Um, you know, we stayed getting after it. And I think after a while, you started to see things increase. The excitement level, the interest obviously increased as postseason came around. And I think it paid off major dividends because when it's time to, hey, it's time to pay attention to college baseball, who should I look to? SEC Unfiltered was standing there in Omaha like, hey, we're here. We've been here the whole time. We'll be here next year. So I, I think – the experience was invaluable for many, many different reasons, personally, professionally, for SEC Unfiltered as a whole. Um, and, yeah, I'm just – I'm grateful to all the folks, players, coaches, media, fans, people we interacted with, everybody, all the above that made the experience special. So, um, can't wait to get back. I mean, I, I just can't it, – it's, it's – right. well, We talked a while in Omaha about I can't wait to get back and play in this for next year. So, that'll be the good news, by the way. That's what I meant to say. Uh, next year – we will have this thing planned out from a standpoint of I will be there the entire time, number one. Uh, I actually had some obligations at home, family stuff that called for me to get home. And then I ended up missing it because my flight got delayed anyway. So it was like, well, but at that point, already had the flight. It was like, all right, stick with the plan, whatever. So next year, this 11 days in the calendar will be blocked off. Harrison and I, I know for a fact, I don't know if Harrison even knows this, I will be reaching out to people. We'll be reaching out to people. Ahead of time, and when I say people, I mean venues. You might see a live show at the Blatt. You might see a live show at Rocco's. Oh. You might see a live show at Lefties. You might see a live show in the Village, wherever. Um, even more content, bigger and better. That's going to be happening. And, again, I know it's – I it's cannot wait. Delayed, I, this is the first time hearing of this. Yeah, it's never too early to think about it. Again, it got – you know, the biggest thing, again, like you mentioned, we had about a week to pull the strings together. So there wasn't a lot of time – to game plan, to strategize. And we didn't know the area or anything. No, we just said, "Hey, just grab your phone and let's take these little mics and let's just hit the hit the road and go to the stadium. Time. We'll, we'll figure it out from there." So, um, and again, I, obviously, guys, it goes without saying, it was great baseball. It was the best of the best. I mean, the talent, and I think Jim Schlossnagel put it perfectly when he said, "This is the golden age of college baseball." He wasn't the only one to say something to that effect, but. I think he put it beautifully when he said it's the golden age of college baseball. And I mean, Harrison, we just, we've never seen the product in college baseball be so good. And I just, I can't wait to see what's next. It's the credit to the shrinking of the draft, I believe, from 40 rounds to 20 rounds. And then obviously 160, whatever, MLB minor league affiliate teams are to 142, I believe. As well as I think guys want to go to college and have this experience that they're seeing on TV, on social media now and develop. And, you know, you, you can't go back and play college baseball. And guys want to go, have that experience and do that and develop even further and raise their draft stock right it's just that i mean obviously when you sign it at a pro you can a pro ball at a high school you can i think a lot of people negotiate in their contract that their education is paid for afterwards i believe they i think that should be a staple in every contract at a high school for pro ball but like you said i mean we didn't even have any of the golden spikes finalists chris competing in omaha but we did have them in omaha we had them at the college world series finals we had the golden spikes winner announced in charlie condon Right before game two, I believe, the goal of the finals. And I interviewed him right after, getting that out shortly. That interview, awesome, awesome guy. Just high class, high character on and off the field. So to have that experience. And then the, the Golden Spikes trophy was there. It was unbelievable to see. Fans could have gone and seen it in the Omaha Village. Mm -hmm. Just unbelievable, Chris. And like you said, like Schloss and so many other people are, are saying, I mean, this is the golden age of college baseball. And college baseball is growing through the roof. I mean, the Super Regionals, let alone early rounds of the of the College World Series, well over 1 million viewers per game. I mean, it, it it's growing at an exponential rate, Chris, and it, it's so good to see. It's College baseball is the people's sport. <laughs> the people's sport, indeed. Harrison, as we, as we put a pin in it here, uh, and I want to make it very clear to you guys, we're not going away anytime soon. We're going to, as you can tell, there's going to be probably no offseason in college baseball as well. So, you know, moving forward, guys, I would say this, and again, you're going to hear from us more in the very near future because we're still kind of wrapping things up from the 2024 season and looking back on the season that was, we got a lot to reflect on, but you will continue to hear and see from us, obviously, as we transition in the summer months into football, it's going to be a little bit different. 
a little bit different dynamic. You may not get us on a weekly basis, but uh, college baseball content is going to continue to be a very, very big part of SEC Unfiltered, just like basketball content is and just like, of course, football content is. So college baseball is growing. It's the people sport, like you mentioned. We're going to continue to cover it at a very high level. And again, I just can't say thank you enough to the fact that there are people that that love it and enjoy it. And I was sitting there because Harrison, I said this multiple times over the last couple of weeks. I was like, man, I feel bad for the people that don't love college baseball right now. I feel yeah, you said like that. low key. I feel bad because I'm like, this is a blast. This is so much fun. And it wouldn't be without you guys tuning in, consuming the content, engaging. Most importantly, I can't say thank yeah. you enough. So Harrison, as it, we put it, a pin in it, final thoughts from you on the experience and anything else. Yeah. I mean, it's, Yes, football is going to be it's we know it's the dominant. It's the money money maker, it's the needle mover in college football, especially in the SEC. But we're going to have content all summer throughout the fall prepping for the spring, whether it's a fall report, whether it's I'm on site or we're going somewhere and you know doing fall reports, meeting players, staff, you know, pro, going to experience programs, facilities, whatever it is, we're going to get content out. So just check it out. You know, just stay in the loop a little bit with college baseball because when spring comes, you're gonna be you're gonna be sitting there like, dang, I'm so glad I, I tuned in and kept up with this. I remember this. They talked about this in the fall. They experienced this and with Texas and Oklahoma joining in college football and college baseball and every other sport in the conference, it's gonna be even bigger. The rivalry in Texas is even bigger, Chris. It's I can't wait for Omaha, Chris. I can wait for next spring already. We're gonna be boots on the ground all season long, giving the best in biggest coverage of college baseball in the SEC. I can't wait. Yeah, the college baseball coverage, the SEC baseball coverage, it'll be even bigger and better from us. And again, like you mentioned, Harrison, the college baseball content ain't going away anytime soon. If for no other reason, then Texas A&M's got to hire a coach and Jace Labalette and Graven Grohov Gavin Grohovic and others are in the transfer portal. So we're going to be talking about it pretty darn soon, uh, just to give you guys a heads up. So yeah. Harrison, I want to say to you, thank you so much, my friend. Again, we'll probably do one more show kind of looking back on the season that was, or we can just discuss it now. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you to you to for all the coverage, for all of, you know, obviously showing up every single week, doing this show with me, and honestly providing the spark for me especially because in a new venture, you know, you're wondering, okay, is there, is there really enough of an audience and excitement to – to warrant this level of coverage, to, to talk about college baseball this in depth. And you showed me, and the audience did as well, but you kept me consistent at it. You kept me going, and you showed me they're absolutely 100% is absolutely warranted because SEC fans love the college baseball. It may wane some we get to football. Like you said, football's king. That's okay. We acknowledge that. We love that. But there's a market there. There's an audience the stories, the players, the people, the coaches, everything. It's what makes college baseball great, and it ain't going away anytime soon. So thank you, yeah. my man, for all of your hard work. I could not have done this without you. And SEC, I appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, SEC, you wouldn't be the powerhouse moving forward covering SEC baseball and college baseball as it is without your hard work. So thank you, my man. Yeah, and I appreciate that, and I wouldn't be able to do it without the platform and just our friendship and relationship doing it here. And like you said, the fans and everyone that engages with us and our content on every social media platform, it's – it's a really a big appreciation for them as well as you. So, guys, thank you all so much. The windup will be back. Stay tuned. Again, like I mentioned, college baseball content's going nowhere. And also, Harrison and I will continue to talk about it over on different entities, whether it's video, it's audio, it's Texas Sports Unfiltered on a live show, whatever it might be. It's college baseball season all year round. Do not make that mistake and think otherwise. Yes, sir. Guys, appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you all so much. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn notifications. Check us out via podcast wherever you get those. You can find us across all social media platforms, as well as our website, secunfiltered.com. For Harrison Fan, I'm Chris Phillips. Appreciate each and every single one of you tuning in, and we'll catch you on the other side.